worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts to celebrate your victory with holy hymns and to proclaim your might with pure tongues we thank you for your love and we worship you crying out Christ is risen he is truly risen to you be glory, to your Father, and to the, your Holy Spirit, now and forever. <coughs> Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he will give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we worship and we praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and you worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. You gathered the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and they cry out. On Friday the king endured pain and was crucified. And today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday a lance pierced his holy side, and this day in his compassion the waters of baptism flow forth. On Friday he was crowned with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of immortality. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and they sing hymns of glory saying, O creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace. Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit so that we may shine in the robe of glory and in its light to see you the true bridegroom. 
In your grace, make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Sanctified us by your crucifixion. You reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection. You raised us up by your ascension and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, o Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever. Amen. Kodishan, Oh, <laughs> 
charity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose Christ who died for his people conquered death to give new life St. Paul to the Hebrews. Father, give your blessing. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and the children forever. Brothers and sisters, pray for us, for we are confident that we have a clear conscience, wishing to act rightly in every respect. I especially ask for your prayers that I may be restored to you very soon. May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus our Lord, furnish you with all that is good, that you may do his will. May he carry out in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to bear with this message of encouragement, for I have written to you rather briefly. I must let you know that our brother Timothy has been set free. If he comes soon, I shall see you together with him. Greetings to all your leaders and to all the holy ones. Those from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with all of you. Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the holy gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle John writes, And after this, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this manner. Together with Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. 
And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. So they said to him, we will also come with you. So they went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. And when it was already dawn, and Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, My children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. <clears throat> and so they cast it. And they were not able to pull it in because of the great number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, This is the Lord. <clears throat> and when Simon Peter had heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and he jumped into the sea. And the other disciples came in the boat. They were not far off from the shore, only about a hundred yards, and dragging the net with the fish. And they climbed out onto the shore. They saw a charcoal fire with fish upon it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went over, and he dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. And even though there were, there were so many, the net had not been torn. And Jesus said to them, Come now and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they now realized that it was the Lord. And Jesus came over, and he took the bread, and he gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. This is the truth, peace be with you. Timothy has been released. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This letter of St. Paul is the very end of the letter to the Hebrews. So you have all these valedictions, these greetings from all the Christians who are in Italy and from St. Paul and from his disciples. And it's wonderful because in passing he mentions our brother Timothy has been freed. He just mentions it. And if Timothy makes it here on time, then it's the two of us that'll come and see you. There is this little moments of light, if you like, at the end of the letter to the Hebrews, which is the most technical of the letters. That's why it's also something ironic that St. Paul writes at the end, I've written to you briefly. A letter to the Hebrews is not brief. It's brief, perhaps, word-wise, but it's very dense with its doctrine that it teaches. And this valediction at the end of the letter is a good moment to remind us about how within the work of God's grace, there is both things that please us and many things that do not please us. And yet, it's always greetings in the Lord because it's always the Lord at work. Whether Timothy's free or Timothy's thrown in prison, whether I'm free or I'm thrown in prison, it's always the Lord. You notice the remarks made in the gospel today. It's St. John who has to lean over and tell Peter, this man on the shore, this is the Lord. And of course, Peter being Peter, he just impetuously jumps into the water. 
Well, you can wait. So we're told the wonderful detail. Well, the rest of them are like, well, no, that's a bit nuts. We're told they stay in the boat because it's only about 300 feet. So we'll, we'll be there in a moment. We don't have to. But the enthusiasm for doing this. And then we said, we're told later on, so there's still something about our Lord that's different. He does not conform to our expectations. That's inevitable within our lives. God is always guiding us, but it's not the way we expect it to be. And to stomp our feet and to squeal and to be angry because this or that doesn't happen the way we wish, it's not what we're being taught in the scriptures. St. Paul is not furious that Timothy had been in prison. It's unfortunate he missed work while being locked up. He could have done a lot more preaching of the gospel. When they're scourging me, flogging me, throwing me in the prison, I'm, I need other things to do more important than this. But he's not furious because of the flogging. It's very interesting. He gives lists of things that he has suffered. We bring up all these things because in the Eastern tradition, the theologian prays. The Eastern tradition, the understanding of theology is precisely what the word means, theologia. It is the study or an expose or an expression of God, about God, theos. So in the Eastern tradition, it is always that the theologian prays. In other words, the person who's actually going to try to express things about God has to be a person of prayer. Otherwise, what you say is just words. Now, in the West, theology has kind of mutated into a science with syllogisms and headings and manuals. I did all of those over years. And they're fine, they're wonderful, there's nothing wrong with them. But it's not like studying chemistry. It's not like studying psychology, that you study theology. You have to pray. There's a lot of people, we've mentioned numerous times, there's a lot of people who like religion, it's cool. It's got neat stuff in it, it's got an impressive history, wow. And then when you do comparative religion, it's even neater, wow. But that's not theology. That's study of religion, I don't know, you call it whatever you want. Study of human psychology. And I bring this up because outside of the city of Ephesus, there's a small hill town, a small hill and a small village. In fact, up until the 20th century, there, at the beginning of the 20th century, in World War I, there were about 600 people there. But there's a hill. And the area is known, was known to the Greeks in the Greek language throughout the centuries as known as Agios Theologos, the holy theologian. And then over the years, Agios became Aios. That's like Hagia Sophia, the great church in Constantinople, became Hagia Sophia. The G changes over the centuries. And so over the centuries, and then when it's part of the Ottoman Empire, it's known as Ayusuluk. And it's known by that name up until the 20th century, which is just the Turkish taking of the Greek name and kind of mushing it up into Seljuk Turk, or Ottoman Turk. And then it was changed to Seltzuk now, and that's what it's referred to now. So all of this long line over 20th centuries, because it's pointing out something in this little hill over here, of Hagios Theologos, this holy theologian, because it's the place where St. John died, very mysteriously died. So we have two feasts of St. John on our calendar in the Eastern churches. We have May 8th today, and we also have in the fall. One, the fall commemorates his death. On May 8th, it commemorates his life, who he is. Not so much his sacred death, and a very mysterious death it was, but of the life, and it was also part of the tradition that people would come for the feast day to the great basilica that Justinian built. Enormous basilica, massively huge building complex. And it overlooked from the hill ruins down below. And those ruins, if you remember when you did whatever at the time when we were studying called social studies or whatever, it used to be kind of history and geography and they mushed it together. And you did these studies and you learned about the eight wonders of the classical, the eight wonders of the world. And one of them, if you recall, was the temple of Artemis, the temple of Diana. Consider this magnificent architectural work. And of course, all of these things other than the pyramids, they're all gone now. They're talked about in the classical world. We know about them. 
Well, that magnificent, wonderful pagan temple is at the bottom of the hill of the great theologian, St. John. The theologian prays, meaning that if I desire to know God, we have to know. It's a bit what's written in the Reflections this week in the bulletin. We have to enter into that life of grace to be able to allow God to touch us, to transform us, and to transform the way we see. Within the context of the objective knowledge of God's revelation in nature and God's revelation given to us in the prophetic word, the catechesis, the apostolic tradition, the Catholic faith. So it's not an individual that just goes off and makes up religion because I say I pray. But unless I actually personally pray within that framework of the apostolic tradition, there's no way I can say that I know God. St. John lived as a hermit outside of Ephesus. The Blessed Virgin's place is on the other side of Ephesus. It's where, in my opinion, actually, the Dormition, the Assumption took place. It's very beautiful. I say that because there's actually three places that claim to be the place of the death of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's also how mysterious that one is. But clearly around the great port city of Ephesus, on one side you had the mother of God who finished her days, and on the other side you have the apostle who had taken her among his own. We talked about on Good Friday. And it's living as a hermit in this area that the holy theologian had been in his place. So the old man, they would go out to visit the old man, who in the last days of his years had to be carried in and out of the Mass, because he was well over a hundred at this point. And the same thing was always said over and over again. My little children love one another. You know, and like old men do, we repeat stories all the time. And St. John, that was it. That was the sermon. In and out, day after day, week after week, my little children love one another. Which means collaborate. Work in one spirit. Work in one body of the Lord. Our, brothers, our brother Timothy has been released from prison, so we're going to get back to work again, and if he makes it here on time, I'll see you together with him. That type of an attitude. And so St. John has this vision because he prays. The theologian prays. So on this great day of the Feast of St. John, we have to ask for that gift of prayer. St. Paul begins this part of the letter at the end of it, that we have, beginning of what we have quoted today, by saying, pray for us. Strengthen us. We pray for you. We work in mutual collaboration. We don't kick the wall and scream because things aren't going the way I want. But we find the unity of the Spirit in the Lord because the theologian prays. Those who desire to know God, Theos, pray. And within that context of the beauty of the objective, catechesis, apostolic tradition, the soul will flourish. And so this great and very mysterious last apostle teaches us in the most simplest of words how to live the gospel. So may his prayers intercede for us, obtain for us that strengthening and a profound desire to enter into the light so that each one of us become truly theologians because we become people who pray and to receive the light of God and are transformed by that light selflessly, inflamed in charity with the vision of God. May his prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the covenant of the church of men and the king of men. For of our sake he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was here. And he rose again on the third day in the words of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint John the Apostle. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
continue with the anaphora of St. John the Apostle on page 815, 815. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, true, you are true love, security that is ever sure, and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls and with a holy kiss worthy of your blessed name that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary that we may glorify you your only son and your holy spirit now and forever O oh lord you sent your beloved son at the appointed time for our salvation and he gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord, of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. You are holy, O Lord, Father, with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, running into the visible nature, and you sanctify us. Our salvation is central sign to the Lord, the Son, which in flesh, suffering, was crucified for us, and had distorted as an image. Ansabel Hamomida, Kodi Shanto, 
غبار اخو قادش وقسو یا بن تلمیدا کارو مرم سب اخو لمهنه کل خور خونو دنی تا فخر و دیل دخلو فیکون و اخلو ساگیه می تخصه و می تیهب خسونیان خامه و خایران قلم علمین آمین خوقن و هلکس و دمزی و من خمر و من مایان بارخ و قادشم و یا بین تلمیدها قار و مارا سابشتا و مهنه کل خود خون و دنی تا دمون دیلن دیان تیکی خدا تو دخل و فایکون و اخلف ساگیم میتی شر و میتی هم خسویم خامه و خایران قلم علمی Do this in memory of me For whenever you eat this body and drink this blood You proclaim my death until I come again When you come in glory with your holy angels and all await the reward they deserve. And when you place the sheep to the right and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O oh Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Annin Mario, Annin Mario, Annin Mario, Nite Moro Rocho Chayu Kadisha, Ona Chen Alain Yuval Korbono, May these holy mysteries sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share in them, cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever.
O oh Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them, we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your church. We pray to you, O oh Lord. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and who profess that you are the true God, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offering upon this altar, and those who desired to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. O Lord, have mercy. We remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. John the Evangelist, and the righteous and the just. Through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They wait for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. To our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be petitions. You taught us your, that through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and with clear consciences praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are thine, now and Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from harm of evil, for you have power over all. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Shlomo el Kuluchunna. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, so that with them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial. Be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies are sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve? In our weakness, and insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el kolichun. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, we thank, and we praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. Through your grace dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy give them life, by your living cross, bless your people and, get, and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father, and to your holy and life-giving mystery, now and forever. <clears throat> so, while cell phones are not necessarily the best music during the liturgy, the squealing of babies is. And so on this day of mothers, I want to thank all of you who have brought life into the world who have been generous in bringing forth that life. I have no experience of it directly, but I do have a sister who is very open and vocal about what it takes to birth a child. So, I have the deepest appreciation to you mothers. We have a special blessing that we will finish with on page 921, and that will be our closing blessings as we wish you a most blessed and joyous Mother's Day today. Go to your homes, my blessed and beloved brothers and sisters in true peace, and may the grace that has been given to me be given to you always. May life descend upon you mothers and enrich your families with life. May this blessing guard you, your daughters and your sons and those present and those absent from every visible evil, and may God's mercy surround the living and the faithful departed who were signed with the victorious and true cross. I do not cease to ask the assistance of your prayers for me, for I am a poor and sinful servant, hoping for the forgiveness of my sins on the day of judgment and of God's mercy be poured forth upon all of us. May the most blessed of living Trinity bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, to whom be glory forever. Leave you in peace and love to return to peace. May the offering of the Son of God be forgiven.